Om Sai Ram. This is a reading of the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna's Council in Time of War, which was translated by Barbara Stoller Miller. I'll leave a link to the book below in case you'd like to read it. Now, this book isn't the entire Bhagavad Gita, but rather focuses on the portion where the sons of Pandu and the sons of Dhritarashtra face off on the battlefield of Kurukshetra. The twelfth teaching, devotion, Arjuna then asked, who best knows discipline, men who worship you with devotion, ever disciplined, or men who worship the imperishable, unmanifest? Lord Krishna replied, I deem most disciplined men of enduring discipline who worship me with true faith, entrusting their minds to me. Men reach me too who worship what is imperishable, ineffable, unmanifest, omnipresent, inconceivable, immutable, at the summit of existence. Mastering their senses, with equanimity towards everything, they reach me, rejoicing in the welfare of all creatures. It is more arduous when their reason clings to my unmanifest nature. For men constrained by bodies, the unmanifest way is hard to attain. But men intent on me, renounce all actions to me and worship me, meditating with singular discipline. When they entrust reason to me, Arjuna, I soon rise to rescue them from the ocean of death and rebirth. Focus your mind on me, let your understanding enter me, then you will dwell in me without doubt. If you cannot concentrate your thought firmly on me, then seek to reach me, Arjuna, by discipline in practice. Even if you fail in practice, Dedicate yourself to action, performing actions for my sake, you will achieve success. If you are powerless to do even this, rely on my discipline, be self-controlled, and reject all fruit of action. Knowledge is better than practice, meditation better than knowledge, rejecting fruits of action is better still, it brings peace. One who bears hate for no creature is friendly, compassionate, unselfish, free from individuality, patient, the same in suffering and joy, content always, disciplined, self-controlled, firm in his resolve, his mind and understanding dedicated to me, devoted to me, he is dear to me. The world does not flee from him, nor does he flee from the world. Free from delight, rage, fear and disgust, he is dear to me. Disinterested, pure, skilled, indifferent, untroubled, relinquishing all involvement devoted to me, he is dear to me. He does not rejoice or hate, grieve or feel desire, relinquishing fortune and misfortune, the man of devotion is dear to me. Impartial to foe and friend, honour and contempt, cold and heat, joy and suffering, he is free from attachment. Neutral to blame and praise, silent, content with his fate, unsheltered, firm in thought, the man of devotion is dear to me. Even more more dear to me are devotees who cherish this elixir of sacred duty as I have taught it, intent on me in their faith.